Hello and welcome to Microba Insider. On this channel, I do videos about diseases caused by microorganisms and microba techniques in general. Before I ride on, please do endeavor to hit the subscribe button and turn on your notification so whenever I upload a video, you'll be the first to know about it. In this video, I will be covering the following objectives. What is malaria? Causes of malaria? Types of malaria infection? The malaria transmission cycle? Symptoms of malaria? How malaria can be diagnosed? Complications associated with malaria? And how malaria can be prevented? What is malaria? Malaria is a life-threatening disease caused by the plasmodium parasite and is transmitted to people through the bite of an infected female Anopheles mosquito. Causes of Malaria Malaria is spread when an infected Anopheles mosquito bites a person. This is the only type of mosquito that can spread malaria. The mosquito becomes infected by biting an infected person and drawing blood that contains the parasite. When that mosquito bites another person, that person becomes infected. Types of Malaria There are five species of plasmodium causing malaria. Firstly, we have the Plasmodium falciparum, mainly found in Africa. It's the most common type of malaria parasite and it's responsible for most malaria deaths worldwide. The second type of malaria we'll be taking a look at is the Plasmodium vivax, mainly found in Asia and South America. This parasite causes milder symptoms than Plasmodium falciparum, but it can stay in the liver for up to three years, which can result in relapses. Thirdly, we have the Plasmodium ovale, which is fairly uncommon and usually found in West Africa. It can remain in your liver for several years without producing symptoms. We also have the Plasmodium malariae, which is quite rare and usually found only in Africa. Lastly, we have Plasmodium nolesi. This is very rare and found in parts of Southeast Asia. Let's take a look at the malaria transmission cycle. We are going to begin first with the mosquito transmission cycle. Firstly, a mosquito becomes infected by feeding on a person who has malaria. If this mosquito bites you in the future, it can transmit malaria parasites to you. Once the parasites enter your body, they travel to your liver, where some types can lie dormant for as long as a year. When the parasites mature, they leave the liver and infect your red blood cells. This is when people typically develop malaria symptoms. If an uninfected mosquito bites you at this point in the cycle, it will become infected with your malaria parasites and can spread them to the other people it bites. Now we are going to take a look at the other modes of malaria transmission. Because the parasites that cause malaria affect red blood cells, people can also catch malaria from exposure to infected blood, including from mother to unborn child through blood transfusions and by sharing needles used to inject drugs. Some of the common symptoms of malaria include fever, chills, fatigue, headache, abdominal pain, muscle or joint pain, nausea and vomiting, cough and sweating. The following methods are some of the ways by which malaria can be diagnosed. The blood smear test. It detects which type of malaria parasite is present and how many parasites are in your blood. We also have the polymerase chain reaction test. This test detects parasite nucleic acids and identifies the species of malaria parasite. Thirdly, we have the full blood count test. 
This checks for anemia. Anemia sometimes develops in people with malaria because the parasite damage red blood cells. Complications associated with malaria. Firstly, we take a look at cerebral malaria. If parasite filled blood cells block small blood vessels to your brain, swelling of your brain or brain damage may occur. Cerebral malaria may cause seizures and coma. Breathing problem. Accumulated fluid in your lungs can make it difficult to breathe. Also, there can be organ failure. Malaria can damage the kidneys or liver or can cause the spleen to rupture. Any of these conditions can be life-threatening. Anemia Malaria may result in not having enough red blood cells for an adequate supply of oxygen to your body's tissues. Lastly, we have low blood sugar. Severe forms of malaria can cause low blood sugar, as can quinine, a common medication used to combat malaria. Very low blood sugar can result in coma or death. Methods by which malaria can be prevented. Cover your skin. Apply insect repellent to skin and sleep under a treated mosquito net.